This is one of the biggest seasons in Nebraska football history. And for that reason, the team is just getting better. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over a highly requested topic. My top 10 players for the Huskers in 2024. We're going to dive into who makes the cut, who just missed it, and perhaps we'll see a true freshman starting quarterback. So really quick, before we dive into it, make sure to hit that like button. If you're starting to get excited about the season, man, it is getting here close. And hey, Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. I post a video about Nebraska football and Nebraska recruiting every single day. And we're on the road to 5,000 subscribers here on this channel. So if you can help me out, hit that subscribe button and not miss any daily Husker content, that would be phenomenal. But without further ado, let's get into it. Looking over Nebraska's top 10 players in 2024. And man, was this list hard to compile. Now, in the past, when I've been making my top five, top 10, top 20 players for the Huskers, it wasn't that difficult because the teams in the past lacked talent. They lacked guys who are legit all Big Ten caliber guys. No longer is that the case under Matt Rule. We're looking at about 20, 25 players for the Huskers who are future NFL draft picks. So it was hard to narrow down that list to 10, but let's just start it off with number 10 for Nebraska. The guy who just barely made the cut and this is Cameron Lenhard. So I had to put him on here. This has been one of my my guys for a very long time. Going into his second year with Nebraska, he's on the defensive line. And he started 10 of the 12 games for Nebraska as a true freshman. The only reason why he didn't start the other two was because he got banged up. But this is a guy last year who had three sacks, 16 tackles, and time and time again is producing at a high level for the Huskers. He's expected to start once again for Nebraska. But the thing that impresses me the most about Cameron Lenhart, not the fact that I believe he has a first-round NFL potential, not the fact that I think he should be all Big Ten this year. The part about him I love the most is that when Matt Rule mentions leaders on this defense, leaders on the team, Cameron Lenhart is one of the first guys he mentions. Cameron Lenhart is only a second-year player. The fact that he's already that much of a leader on this team is going to pay dividends by the time he gets to his junior, even senior campaign. So, love Cameron Lenhart. People need to give him respect. Man, I mean, he legit could be a first-round NFL draft pick, if not day two. So, watch out for him. He's my 10th best player for Nebraska. But let's take it down to number nine. And this is where we're going to see Stephon Thompson. So, of course, Stephon Thompson transferring in from Syracuse. He's one of the most productive linebackers in the country. Let's call it what it is. Last year had 56 tackles for the Orange. And he is just another leader. A guy who's been playing since his true freshman year. Going into his fifth year of college football now. Getting back with his old defensive coordinator, Tony White. Now, the only reason why I'm putting him this high. I think he honestly should be in that 5-4 range when we end the season is because he got to campus overweight. He wasn't in football shape. That should not be the case anymore. He's going to hit the ground running, get into fall camp. And I think, man, he's going to have another productive season. We're looking at about a guy who's going to have 80, even 90 tackles for Nebraska. I love Stephon Thompson. Let's take it to number eight, to the offensive line. A little bit of a surprise here. And we're going to put Bryce Benhart at this spot. So let's just call it what it is. Bryce Benhart has not been Nebraska fans' most favorite player over the last couple of years. He has struggled a lot at right tackle, given up a lot of sacks. However, that changed last year. He graded as Nebraska's second best offensive lineman. And not only was he developed in the running game, but he stopped giving up those sacks. He looked very polished in the pass pro. So Bryce Benhart, man, he is turning a corner in his career I mean, in a big way, we're, talk we're talking about a guy who could potentially be all Big Ten, even an NFL draft pick. So for that reason, he's the eighth best player in Nebraska this season. That should tell you how much of an improvement he has been, and I'm expecting that to be the exact same way this season. So love Bryce Benhart. He's going to start at right tackle, no problem. But let's take it back to the D-line because this defensive line, spoiler alert, is stacked for Nebraska. Jamari Butler is going to be my number seven player. So honestly, this seems pretty low for Jamari Butler as well. He led the team in sacks last year with 5.5, and he's the best pass rusher on the team. I don't even think that's up for debate. Another guy who has a legit NFL potential. I think he's going to be a draft pick in the spring. So again, the only reason why he's not higher is because we've got some more defensive linemen ahead of us. And again, this list is stacked. This team is very talented for Nebraska. Let's go to another defensive lineman here at number six, and this is Ty Robinson. So Ty Robinson, man, one of the best run stoppers we've seen in Nebraska in a long time. The only con I have with Ty, and I've said this in the past, is that he needs to get to the quarterback. He is a defensive end in our 3-3-5 scheme. Last year, he only had one sack. Now, here's the caveat to that. He led the team in quarterback hurries with 20. Okay, clearly, he can get to the quarterback. He just can't bring them down. 
Hopefully that changes this year. But I mean, Ty Robinson, very athletic player for being listed at 310 pounds. Another guy who has an NFL potential. I expect him to be all Big Ten. And yeah, this D-line is just going to be one of the best in the country. Let's just put it out there. Let's go to number five. And this is Isaac Gifford. So another player that Nebraska fans might think, hey, Wilson, why don't you put him in your top three? Now, I love Isaac Gifford. He's number one, the best tackler on Nebraska's football team. Number two, probably the best in zone coverage on Nebraska's football team. The only thing about Isaac Gifford that I've struggled with in the past when I watch him on film is that he is horrendous in man coverage. Okay, Last year, I was watching the Colorado game recently. Travis Hunter made a couple plays on him, got a couple touchdowns because he was in man coverage against Isaac Gifford. Right, Gifford really struggled the start of the season. However, with that being said, the final six games for Isaac Gifford were, were some of his best. He graded out as one of the best members of the secondary in the entire country. So I really like Isaac Gifford. I don't want that con to really reflect on how good of a player he is. He is a top five player for Nebraska. I just don't want to put him higher because I do think he needs to work a little bit in man coverage. But again, going back to the pros, he's one of the best tacklers. I mean, there was a couple of plays where he just stood up a running back on the line of scrimmage. He has great instincts, great in zone coverage, and another guy who should be an NFL draft pick in the spring. So that's my fifth player. Let's go back to the offensive line here with number four. And this is Ben Scott, another player who does not get enough love from Nebraska's fan base. Again, a lot of times you don't see offensive centers get love, but this is a guy who gritted out as our best offensive lineman last year coming in from Arizona State. He's just a rock. You don't have to worry about Ben Scott. He's not going to give up sacks. He's not going to be a liability inside. And for that reason, when you don't hear an offensive lineman's name called, you don't really think about them. That's Ben Scott. He's a rock. He's going to be all Big Ten. Honestly, I think it's going to be a day two draft pick. So feel good about him. All right. We're now to our top three for Nebraska this season. Let's take it to the secondary. Tommy Hill is going to be my third best player for Nebraska. And I'm a big Tommy Hill guy. I mean, last year he had nine PBUs and four INTs for the Huskers. We love to talk about how good the secondary was uh, with Omar Brown, with Quentin Newsom. Tommy Hill was arguably our best player there last year. Think about how good he's going to be this year. He graded as a top 20 returning corner in the country, one of the best in the Big Ten. Yeah, I think he's going to be phenomenal. And it should be noted, this is Tommy Hill's last season. He did not redshirt. He did not have a COVID year. So he is a senior for Nebraska last year of eligibility. And I believe he's going to be another day two draft pick. Love Tommy Hill. Let's take it to the D-line. Nash Hutmucker is up next at number two. Just one off from number one. But, I mean, Nash can do it all. I mean, last year he had 4.5 sacks, 40 tackles. I cannot tell you how impressive that is for a nose tackle in a 3-3-5 to have that statistics behind his name. Okay, we're expecting a guy to have, you know, seven, even eight sacks this year. Maybe even about 50 tackles. Again, that's unheard of for the position he plays at. He's a game wrecker. He's a guy who can get to the quarterback and get to the running back, who helps out his other defensive linemen by swallowing up double teams. I cannot talk about how good Nash is because he's that guy, and I expect him, once again, to be an NFL draft pick in the fall. Man, this roster is looking good for Nebraska. All right, with that being said, we have went over everybody in my top 10, except for one. The number one player for Nebraska this season, I believe, will be Jamal Banks. So this has been my guy since he transferred in from Wake Forest. I've been watching him for years at Wake Forest. He's been one of my best players or my favorite players in all of college football. He's just a jump ball machine. Last year he had 650 yards for the Demon Deacons and has had 13 touchdowns over the last two seasons. Last year for Jamal Banks, his quarterback play was incompetent to say the least. Us Nebraska fans were familiar with that. If he had Sam Hartman, his past quarterback last year, he would already be in the NFL as perhaps a second round, third round draft pick. That's how good he is. But now he's going to be developed even one more year. He's going to be with a great quarterback. I expect him to have a Trey Palmer type season, a legit 1,000, you know, 1,200 yard t type year where he's getting, you know, multiple touchdowns a game. Um, he's one of the best players in the Big Ten for that reason. I think he might even get All-American honors. So I love Jamal Banks. Again, just a do-it-all type of guy. Not the fastest in the world, but he's 6'4". It's not a jump ball when he's around. He's going to go up and get it, and he's going to rack up touchdowns. So love Jamal Banks. I'm sliding him in there at one. That's my list, folks. My top 10 for Nebraska. I just want to go over my honorable mentions real quick. 
Dylan Riola just barely missed my list. I have him in the top 15. Not going to say where just yet. We're going to wait uh, until later in uh, the offseason to give out my full rankings. But Dylan is in that top 15. Prince Welton Mamulum, love him. Another guy going into a sophomore campaign on the D-line. Buda Wright at our linebacker spot. And then the two safeties for Nebraska, Deshaun Singleton and Marquez Buford, just missed out on my top 10. But again, man, this is the most talented Nebraska's roster looked like in a long time. Every single guy I just mentioned in the top 10, I believe could be all Big Ten players this year. And most of them, I believe, are going to be drafted. So that speaks volumes about Matt Rule's development and the way this program is trending up. So... That's my top 10. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. Do you think a player should be higher, lower? Let me know in the comment section below. And hey, if you made this far on the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Again, we're on the road to 5,000. Hopefully, we can hit by the football season. So if you hit that, that would help me out a lot. I'm so thankful for every single one of you. But as always, folks, go Big Red, go Matt Rule, and see you in the next one.